Hi, welcome back to the Small Town Small Time Dog Seller. Oh, no, not Dog Seller. The, um, too hard to get bubble wrap on a dog. It really is. Oh, oh that was not a heavy table. Hey, uh, John, Small Town Small Time Bookseller here uh, with something a little different. So I've got some requests to talk about boxing and wrapping and shipping and and whatnot like that. And so I'm gonna do that today. Whether you like it or not, hopefully you will. And so, uh, yeah, we're just gonna do this. Sales have been kind of slow anyways, I'm looking for something else to do. And I had a, a viewer did a request to do some a, a video kind of like this, and one had done it before, and I said I would, and I never did, so sorry. But now I am doing it, and it's a little weird sitting over here, uh, but we'll try to make this work. Hopefully you can see me, okay? The camera is precariously placed upon a stack of unlisted books and a thing of bubble wrap. So um, the first thing to think about uh, or to talk about, I guess, is the boxes I use. So I have a few that I use a lot. This uh, 10 by 7 by 3 is one I use quite a bit. I also have this 12 by 10 by 4 and it's a multi-dimensional. So you know you can just uh it's already scored along here so you just just uh, eviscerate the corners and um and then it's a it's a 12 by 10 by 2 so those are very handy i like that one a lot um another one i use a lot is this one i think this is like an 11 and a half by 9 or 11 by 9 or something like that and this one is uh it, it's folds up very quickly as you can see and um, and it doesn't need tape to put it together so once it's done it's it's done so I like that one a lot and then um, I also have this one it's a uh, I wrote on it somewhere 12 by 9 by 1 or it's also scored so it could be like a half if I have something that's just this size, I'll use this one, but I don't really like it. Um, the, the perforations are so deep, I worry that it's gonna it's gonna come apart. And so I end up taping the heck out of it whenever I use one of these, but sometimes they're good. And then a couple, what are these called? Bubble mailers that I use a lot. I have on hand is an 11 by 14 and a nine by 11. Are the two bubble mailers I often have. Um, so, when I'm thinking about which one of these to use, a couple things, obviously size is the first thing that I have to think about, but also value. And not only value, but collectability. If somebody's buying something and it seems like it's something collectible, even if it's not valuable, I want it to get there in good shape. Um, so I'll always put it in a box if it's collectible or it's valuable. If it is a, uh, a smaller paperback guide or something small, uh, that's not collectible, then I could put it in one of those uh, bubble mailers. But, um, you know, not, not a lot. Or if it's a, a smaller fiction book, it's something that somebody's probably just going to read or mark up. If it's a guide of some kind, I'm not too worried about it being show, showing up in perfect condition. And although the bubble mailers do a good job. Um, so I was going to give you a couple examples here. So let's just say I had a book like this. This is the Color Atlas of Pathophysiology. And if somebody bought this one, which they couldn't because I took it off my death pile, um, this is what I would do. So smaller books are going to get a sheet of bubble wrap. So my bubble wrap, um, I guess you'd call that small bubble wrap. I really don't know because it's all I've ever had. And I always get it at Walmart. Um, right now, they're going like 20 bucks a roll. But I've been real lucky because every time I run out, they go on sale. And so the last time they were like $8 a roll and I got like 10 of them and they've lasted quite a while. And uh, so next time if I run out, if Walmart doesn't have them on sale, I may look into American Bubble Boy or one of those other ones, something like that to see if I can get it cheaper. But for now, the Walmart has kept me, get me stocked with, uh, with the bubble wrap. So um, one square of this, put the, the book on the, on the diagonal. And um, I'm going to wrap it across there. Little piece of tape. Take this side up here. 
A little piece of tape. Top flap down. A little piece of tape. And then I'm going to do it again. So I'm going to put it upside down on another um, square of bubble wrap. Tape across there. Tape up its little feet. Tape down its little head. And now that would go in this uh, 10 by 7 by 3. And I'm just going to fill in the gaps with some paper, you know, and it's ready to go. So uh, that pretty much the way I would do things. Um, so sometimes people would think that uh, double uh, layers of bubble wrap and a box is overkill. I don't think so. I think it's I think it's just the right amount of kill. Uh, but uh, you know, teach their own. But I do get a lot of positive feedback uh, for my packaging. A lot of times people say, you know, thank me for uh, the care that I take in packaging something. I want it to get in good shape. And if it gets wet, that's going to protect it. If it gets kind of wet, you know, uh, hopefully that will protect it. So, and then also on the box, like I'm. Obviously, I wouldn't be ready to ship this. I'm going to put in the paper to make sure it doesn't move at all. Just give it a good shake. And so the way I would tape this, I would have, I would go once all the way around the box, about one and a quarter times. And then I'm also going to go this way around the box with a tape. And then I usually even tape down the side here and the side there. And again, that's to prevent moisture from getting in, and I just want to make sure it's really well packaged. Um, and so that's that's what I do. You know, if I was selling 20 bucks a day, I may not do all that, but but it's still pretty small time around here. So uh, another example. Now this actually sold today, $15. This is the New Testament Study Guide, and so with a larger book like this, this here's how I wrap them. Um, again, I'm going to, so now I'm going to take two sheets of the bubble wrap. I'm going to put this in the middle like that and wrap it there. And then another two sheets. And this time I'm going to go the other direction with it. So again, set that in the middle and this one's going to go here. Then this one's going to go up. So now, got it all the way around, plus piece of tape at the top, piece of tape at the bottom. And you see that really took very little time. Four pieces of bubble wrap and like, what was that, like one, two, three, four, like four pieces of tape. So not much at all. Um, this one, I don't know, what box should I use for, where'd my, where'd my other box go? I think I'm going to use this one. So I, I do use this kind of box a lot. So yeah, that's going to fit nicely in there. Um, as you can see, I might put in one piece of paper just to keep it from moving around much. And I leave a little gap in the front for the, for the uh, flap. Get it down there. Okay, I ain't moving anywhere. That's that's pretty good. I like that. So then, tape's over there. I was gonna actually tape it up. For this one, um, tape around the middle this way, tape around once this way, and then because it's got this real long opening here, I just put a piece of tape across here, one here, one here. And then it's, I feel secure. I feel good that it's gonna get there without any issue. So. That's what I do for books of that size. Um, things like this court officer New York State book. So this is something that somebody's going to mark up. They're going to read. Not a collectible. Not worried about this. Uh, you know, showing up in absolute perfect condition. And so I would put bubble wrap around it. And then use this for the uh, um, a bubble mailer as well. Um, I have sent these without bubble wrapping them. Um, 
I could do that. So I, it just kind of depends. Depends on how tired I am. <laughs> so, but I think something like this would be fine in just a bubble mailer. But I probably would typically um, bubble wrap that as well. Um, then a book like this one, another study guide, this SSAT upper level prep book. That one might fit well in this kind of a book. So it fits just about perfectly. And so we just kind of fold it up like that. But it's not perfect, right? And so I would definitely put a layer of bubble wrap around this one. Um, I've tried doing these with maybe two layers and sometimes then it gets too thick. So this might just be one layer. And that's mostly, it's entirely just to um, keep it from sloshing around when it gets hauled off somewhere so um, but that's going to be good for that's why i bought these is for books like this because i do sell i do sell a lot of steady guides so um that's pretty much it uh, as far as you know my process for i have um some odd shaped boxes out in the garage for particularly large books i had one the other day that was um just slightly longer like about an inch longer than one of these and what I ended up doing was I took that down this side and got another one of these and smashed them together I slid one in about you know most of the way and then I was able to tape the heck out of the thing and uh, use two of these to make one larger box so I've done that before and then another thing oh here's another uh, packing tip I always save like these big boxes like this, these um, paperboard from like large cereal boxes and all. And if I'm selling or I'm shipping off um, some kind of ephemera, these are great. It keeps the, the, the envelope secure. So I'll put like something, I'd take this apart, put the catalog or the letter or the map or whatever it is I'm selling that I don't want to get bent inside something like this. So I keep a lot of the paperboard whenever we finish something. Um, it doesn't go in the recycle. I just keep it to uh, to protect uh, smaller things. I recently sold a couple catalogs of the McCoy's catalogs. They're from the 1960s, and this was like perfect. So I just uh, you know put it together, and then then that went in a bubble mailer. And I'm not, I wasn't worried at all about it showing up bent or anything. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, shipping then everything goes media mail. And I buy it off eBay. I think there's a discount when you do it that way. And uh, I have um, a printer at home. So I have the half sheet peel off stickers. And I just print all, everything here. Sometimes from where I live, the Wi-Fi is not, doesn't work a lot. So I do use QR codes whenever that happens. And then I just go inside the post office and, um, and use the QR codes to do the shipping. But um, yeah, other than that, you know. That's pretty much all the all the advice I think I can give you. Um, I if I for the books that are you know those rare ones, those those two hundred dollar ones, I'm not going to go media mail. I will go um, priority for the for ones like that. Probably even hundred dollar ones. I say that, but then I also think well the last few that I've sold for over hundred, I just send a media mail. So. I have had no issues with media mail that were serious issues. I've never had anything completely lost using media mail. I've had a couple things that, like I mentioned in one review before, they just kind of hung out in Memphis for a couple of weeks before they finally did move on to the final destination, but they all got found. I've had to put in a, a, a request twice for with the post office to look for a book, and both times it was found within a couple of days and sent on. So... I've had great success with media mail. Everything has showed up in good condition. I have a lot of uh, positive feedback and you know, that's, that's me. So I uh, hope that you might've learned a little something <laughs> and uh, if so pass it along to someone else. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to move this table back out of the way. Oh, that's not a heavy table. And then I'm going to go over there and turn off the camera and I will see you next time. I have a what's sold coming out pretty soon. And, um, Hope you watch it. Thanks. Adios.